Welcome to Unleashed, the show that explores how to thrive as an independent professional. I'm your host, and in January, I'm posting an episode daily, long-form interview episodes on Mondays, and shorter episodes on Tuesday through Sunday. Today, I want to talk about chutzpah and humility. According to some definitions, the words could be considered antonyms, but I'd like to use those words in a specific way, such that the meanings are orthogonal and independent. And let's talk about a traditional two by two matrix with the vertical axis as willingness to act independently. And I'm gonna say that chutzpah is high willingness to act independently. The opposite would be compliance. So at one extreme we have chutzpah. Now chutzpah can have negative connotations in the Yiddish, I've, I've read, but I wanna use the term to encompass audacity and presumptuousness a high degree of willingness to act without permission from authority. So running to be president of the Harvard Law Review, if you're a student at Harvard Law School, uh, does not demonstrate chutzpah. It would be ambition, but, but not really presumption. However, a first-year law student that starts a new law review to compete with the Harvard Law Review does demonstrate chutzpah. Society has not given that student permission. If someone could ask or does ask, who are you to do this? Or what do you think you are? Who do you think you are to do this? That is probably a sign that you're demonstrating chutzpah. And the opposite would be compliance. And I think we understand what that means. The other dimension, the horizontal dimension, is openness to new information. And I'm going to call the right-hand side humility, high humility, and the left-hand side arrogance. So humility Uh, While it can have the implications of low self-regard, low opinion of oneself, I want to use the term humility to mean a lack of attachment to being right, a a willingness or even an eagerness to have your ideas challenged. And if new facts support an alternate belief, a willingness to change one's mind. High curiosity. You'd rather be better informed than be proven correct. Now, arrogance on the left-hand side, however, is that you're convinced by your own story, You'd rather win the argument, uh, and you're resistant to new ideas, new facts, or changing your mind. So you're unwilling to ask for directions. So let's talk about the four quadrants on our 2x2. Start with the top left, so high chutzpah and high arrogance. Now someone who is in the top left can create a very successful startup, at least successful in the short term, Uh, If the person happens to be right about one big thing and has the chutzpah to act on it. But when uh, new sources of information arise, if they're close to those new sources of information, if the facts change, that startup can blow up and they, because they're insulated from new sources of information and a changing, uh, changing landscape. So, um, success makes the uh, entrepreneur or executive even more convinced of their infallibility until they blow up. So I would call this sector uh, of high chutzpah and high arrogance time bombs. Uh, now let's talk about the bottom left. High compliance but high arrogance. These are callers to sports talk radio. They're full of opinions, but they start nothing useful. Avoid these people at all costs. Exclude them from your company. Uh, and I call them critics. Uh, The bottom right, high compliance and high humility. These are good factory workers. They won't blow up the company. They do what they're told. Uh, They won't start anything that you weren't expecting. Um, It's what we've designed our schools to produce. They give the right answer. Um, They study hard for the test. They can complete an assignment on time. And if the job can be proceduralized, then we can get someone uh, from the bottom right to do that. Uh, we can call these individuals cogs. The final quadrant uh, is high chutzpah and high humility. Somewhat contradictory postures. High chutzpah is a high willingness to take the initiative without being granted permission, but also high humility, seeking out evidence to challenge one's, old, one's own cognitive biases. These are the type of people that I like to hang out with as friends or uh, colleagues or as clients, and I call this group Lynchpins, taking the term from Seth Godin's book, Lynchpin, Are You Indispensable? A Lynchpin, the high chutzpah, high humility, 
seeks out new ways to automate her own work to get off her plate so that she can take on new responsibilities. She has the confidence, the self-confidence and the initiative to identify a problem and to fix it, and at the same time, recognize that she might be wrong. So always seeking out signals. How can my business get disrupted? Do the facts still support my convictions? Uh, a linchpin um, does not get blown from one direction to the next with the latest trend or rumor, but they do have the audacity to abandon their own beliefs and even walk away from a sunk cost investment that no longer makes sense to capture new opportunities that have emerged. Uh, in a rapidly evolving market, individuals with high chutzpah and high humility will always be in demand. They can't be outsourced because what they do cannot be proceduralized. So thanks for listening. If you thought this was interesting, hope you share it with one or two friends. And if you haven't already, you can go and visit umbrex.com slash unleashed and sign up for the weekly unleashed email where we include transcripts of each episode some book recommendations, and consulting tips. Thanks for listening.